We are here with Dato Key. She is the deputy chairman of the Malaysia Tourism Promotion Group Board. Dato Key is very well known for her passion uh, for and knowledge about cultural heritage uh, related matters with uh, Malaysia in general and, and of course tourism. Welcome. Thank you, Charles. Tell us about your new project. We're going to start about the new project and then go backwards and talk about uh, more existing. You're, you're going to be tracing some heritage of, of who as it relates to Malaysia. Well, the, uh, you know, when, whenever we talk about promotion and marketing of a country, um, many people must realize that the soul of a city uh, lies with the people. Um, and for this, you have to trace, naturally trace where they come from, uh, their place of origin, or if they are not natives of that country. Now, the pet, the pet project that I'm involved in is now to look at uh, Malaysia in general, and Penang in particular. Actually, not, it's not only Penang, it is the northern states of Malaysia in particular. And to trace the... Uh, trails of the early pioneers. And this project started when and when do you envision that the uh, that it, you would call it not completed necessarily but that it's ready for showing and for for marketing? Well um, you, you must understand that Georgetown uh, is made up of certain clans and families and banking groups that owns cluster uh, that owns a row of these houses. Um, for example, the Yap Kong Si and the Ku Kong Si's, they own a few hundred of these buildings. And what they have done is... A few the, hundred? Yes. Well, how many total are We have about... Uh, pre, 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 no, no, Pre-war houses should come up to about easily uh, 20,000. If you look at the whole of, of uh, Georgetown. But... Uh, in the inner city, about six to seven thousand of these buildings, and they are still untouched. Untouched in the sense that they have not been uh, stripped down and and uh, uh, re rebuilt as boxes, you know. Uh, but what we want to do is to encourage them to do it in a proper manner. And if you look at Beach Street now, you have the corporate members responding, like the Quark Group. You know, their whole row of uh, uh, heritage buildings, they have restored it for commercial purpose. The same with OCBC. So any, any of these old buildings that have been owned, instead of tearing it down to build uh, multi-storey buildings, they have restored it and made use of it for their, for, for, for their corporate uh, activities. But I don't want to sound like, like a promoter of tourism. I Go right rather, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather want to be uh, like to promote uh, travelers to come. Because a tourist comes, when a tourist comes, he ex the tourist expects to see things. But when a traveler comes, then they will see what there is to really see. And I want to make travelers out of tourists. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm here with Mr. Niem, who is CEO of Asian Experience Tours, uh, based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Mr. Niem is also president of Malaysia Association of Tour and Travel Agents, an association with nearly over 2,000 members. Thank you for joining us. And tell me about what uh, Asia Experience Tours uh, offers. Asia Experience Tours is a wholesale inbound company specializing in Malaysia. We do offer destination services handling as a handling agent for the whole of Malaysia. Uh, we offer obviously like hotel accommodations, uh, transportation, transfer services, tours, package tours and any handling, special handling, including incentives, meetings for any travelers, both leisure and business into the country. Specialize in any particular type of tours or activities? Uh, we do mainly the mainstream. Uh, of course, we offer the whole range. Uh, we being the ground, op uh, ground handling agents, we do what Malaysia is strong at, 
basically we do uh, around the country for sightseeing. We, we also offer ecotourism because this is what Malaysia is all about in certain part of the country like Sabah where we are very strong as well as say the national forest in the national park in Peninsular Malaysia. So we do ecotourism, we do beach day. In, in short, what we offer is we offer the mainstreams. Example, some of our, our agents, our partners, will be like Thomas Cook from UK. Uh, to give an example, they buy from us a whole range of packages, both from the nature, the city, around, around to us. That gives you a flavor of what we do as well. We are here with Paul Chan. He is Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Genting Resorts. And I'm seeing on his business card, the City of Entertainment. That, that's really good. Yep. Thanks, tell, Charles. <laughs> tell us what is new at Genting. It is a very established uh, area for uh, leisure activities in Malaysia. What's, what's new and different now? Well, uh, Charles, uh, we, being Malaysia's leading uh, resort, we call ourselves the City of Entertainment simply because we provide uh, non-stop entertainment. We have loads of uh, shows and events every weekend. So all the top regional artists that come in from uh, Singapore, from uh, Hong Kong, from Taiwan, as well as overseas uh, groups such as Michael Learns to Rock, Cliff Richard, Engelbert Humberding. Uh, these are some of the stars we had. Uh, recently we even had Olivia Newton-John and of course the whole range of uh, the Hong Kong uh, industry is here with us, as well as recently we had the uh, Z Awards, uh, one of the top uh, viewership of the Indian Bollywood movies, and we had over 160 uh, top Bollywood celebrities uh, from the likes of uh, Shah Rukh Khan, Ashura Rai, and the whole work. So uh, we have establishing ourselves almost as the cans of uh, Asia, whereby all the different uh, sub celebrities gather. Uh, simply because uh, being in the cool Chris uh, mountain uh, up six, at 6,000 feet and have, we have created a city by itself where there's over 10,000 uh, rooms available as well as uh, 12,000 employees uh, serving all these uh, wonderful guests that come to Malaysia. Uh, we have 80 over food and beverage uh, establishments. Uh, we have over 120 team park rides. We have also about 150 shopping facilities. So these uh, 150 shopping outlets cater for a wide range of goods from uh, cosmetics to jewelry to clothes to electronic to watches and uh, you know it is a shopping paradise by itself and so in itself uh, it's a one-stop destination a truly integrated resort that allows you to hold your convention in the week that you will be there there's uh, nothing to stop you from enjoying all the different facilities and it's a question of how much time you have. Joining us this afternoon is Mohamed Twa. He is with Sarawak Tourist Board. And Mohamed, could you tell us some of the basic overview of what Sarawak has to offer the visitor? Okay, uh, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Sarawak itself. Sarawak actually is uh, one of the states in Malaysia. is uh, on the northern tip of the island of Borneo. Okay, and uh, it has a population of uh, slightly 2.5 million, and made up to 2.5 million people, and made up of about uh, 27 different ethnic groups. Okay, and uh, of course uh, the people themselves. It's uh, the interesting uh, thing about uh, the people of Sarawak is that uh, despite the different racial background, we live happily uh, and uh, together. Uh, we are very uh, much concerned in the conservation and preservation of our uh, cultural heritage. That is our strength actually uh, for Sarawak in, uh, when it comes to attracting tourists, mainly from the long haul market. Thank you. I am here with Shaw. He is general manager of Langkawi Tourism of Malaysia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, event. Please um, tell our audience uh, some of the basic uh, uh, things about Langkawi, where is it located and its attraction. 
Well, uh, Langkawi consists of 99 magical islands in the sun. Um, of course, it's uh, located towards the north of Peninsular Malaysia. And of course, Langkawi is the um, uh, national destination for Malaysia if we can compare it to uh, Bali in Indonesia or even Phuket in Thailand, then I think appropriately what is Langkawi to Malaysia. How many of the islands are developed for tourism? For the moment, although we have 99 islands, but uh, there are only uh, two islands that is fully uh, inhabited and developed as a tourism uh, island. And of course, Langkawi Island is the main island that is m m more focused for tourism for its size. And, and air service, accessibility, uh, how is it? Well, uh, we are fortunate that um, uh, Malaysia Airlines, Silk Air, uh, and latest was Firefly uh, come to Langkawi. Besides, these are scheduled flights. Air Asia uh, flies five times a day, uh, Malaysia Airlines 12 times a day, and of course, Fireflies into Penang. In terms of connectivity, uh, even uh, we can go to uh, Phuket and Koh Samui. Uh, we are also working with Bangkok Airways to fly uh, from Koh Samui to Langkawi and back. Uh, besides the scheduled services, we also have ad hoc uh, charters, especially during the um, uh, northern winter months, uh, where a Langkawi experience its high peak months of the year. We are joined by Nawawi, He's the general manager of Trangano State Tourism. Thank you for coming, and please tell us uh, some basic things about Trangano State. Where is it located, and what is this attraction to for tourists? Thank you. Trangano State lies in the eastern part of the peninsula Malaysia, and we are facing the South China Sea. Trangano State is basically is a state where we have a, a very long coastline. We have about 240 kilometers of coastline, which is of the wide and sandy, bright sandy sand. Other than the beaches, we have also uh, an island, a few islands which is uh, very famous for those who uh, love the sand, the sea, and the sun. How do you distinguish your area with those other states in Malaysia mm -hmm. and other destinations in Southeast Asia? But you have a lot of competition, but maybe you have something very dis distinguishing. Well, we don't consider as a, a competition that much. Well, we'll complement to other states. Well, of course, basically, Trangano is uh, nature-based. But those who visitors or lovers, especially that who likes the nature. Of course, Trangano can offer varieties, be it the sea, the water, or even the island, or even the lakes. But of course, other than the, the nature, we are also, we have uh, rich in cultural activities, especially on the crafts. Where Trangano is famous for its songket, a fabric which is a very familiar especially to the local, where they do some, where they have the wedding ceremonies and so on, they use the songket. Or even songket, how do you spell that? S-O-N-G-K-E-T, a songket. And also Trangano is also famous for batik, where most of the batik that comes also from Trangano, which have a very fine, fine quality, either it's uh, handmade or even in the machine made. And other than Batik, Trangano also produces a lot of uh, silverware, which is, uh, which is also a traditional uh, handicraft. The most important thing is that to come and enjoy and relax, where you can always enjoy your, especially in our nature and the beauty of Trangano, which is considered as the nature-based states. Thank you so very much.